Welcome to the Tough Fish Show. I am so excited to bring to you Jody Meltzer. Jody, thank you so much for joining the show. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm honored to be here. I am thrilled to have you. And I would love for you to start with, how did you get into writing? So it's a pretty long and convoluted story, but I will say the Cliff Notes version is, you know, ever since I was younger, I remember distinctly going out in my front yard in this large boulder, probably lovingly placed by the builders. And I would sit out there at times, it was like my own personal Starbucks and write poems. And really no one knew that I did this. I mean, I did it for years, maybe my brother knew, but it wasn't something I was running around telling my friends or anything like that. It was just something to you know get my thoughts out there and capture them. Definitely not my best work uh, if I look back on it now, but it, it got me thinking about writing. But something that I didn't really see myself doing as a career, even in college studying communications, um, I almost, it was like an evolution to get to the point where like, you know what, I'm a writer. But I remember one time in college, I was tasked with writing, it was a journal and it could be in the first person, it could be, uh, you know, anything you wanted to, but you just had to be um, writing every day. And my professor wrote me a note I still have. And he said, you seem to gravitate towards writing in the first person and you have something to say, so go with it. And it really gave me encouragement at that time to think, you know, maybe all of my, you know, journaling and all of my poems, it really could get somewhere. Um, so that was the foundation. Uh, but I originally, I, after college, I wound up working in film for a couple of, on a couple of films for free. And then I worked at Inside Edition as a runner, but worked my way up to a story coordinator and you know, started writing really religiously there. That is awesome, but I love the encouragement. It is amazing how powerful the right teacher with the right message at the right time even can really change how you think of things. I had a teacher who did something very similar too, is it, but I was in high school. And so I just, I'm so glad to hear that, the, that you experienced that. So love teachers. I know. You, they do not get enough credit. I mean, they're just remarkable humans and they don't realize oftentimes, even, you know, years later, I'm talking like 25 years, I'm dating myself, but <laughs> it's a long time that I remember him and in what he meant to me. And even in at Inside Edition, I was working on two shows, American Journal and Inside Edition, and Michelle Dabney Perez was an anchor there. And she may not remember me, but I remember her because she gave me a lot of encouragement to create a demo reel to get my first news anchoring job. So, you know, through all touch points in my career, I could name people who played a pivotal role in my life. They may remember me, I don't know, but I remember them and I take that with me and those lessons. That's a great perspective. And I think of it, I kind of liken it to like divine breadcrumbs, like things happen and that you might not have realized how you ended up at the path you're in. And odd, you might even not know where you're going yet, but you still, all these things happen and they kind of led you to the next step, which led to the next step. Because if you hadn't had those experiences, if you hadn't had those words of encouragement or those opportunities, would that have, could you have ended up where you are now with these books out where you're sharing such, uh, and sharing authentic, beautiful stories too? I mean, maybe, but the path that you were on helped you to, to develop that and to develop the courage to do that too. Absolutely. And, you know, and I have a really interesting background, you know, because I've worked on air in, you know, as an anchor reporter, get, getting to do such incredible work there. I, I interviewed everyone from Hillary Clinton to the Goo Goo Dolls. And I was also a health reporter. So I, I was um, able to talk to people in these really intense, you know, intimate moments. And they, they let me into their lives. And I always carry that with me as well. So I did that, I've been in public relations. And when I was um, 
a first time biological mother, I knew that I was only going to have one child. So I took a couple of years off. And anyone who knows me knows that, you know, I have multiple tabs open at all times and I just don't <laughs> sit well easily. So I, I wound up launching a blog called Mommy Dish during that time. And that really elevated my whole presence online. I attracted a lot more followers. And that was another opportunity where I, I received a lot of encouragement from readers, people who understood, you know, kind of where I was, where I was going and um, my message, sense of humor, sarcasm. But, you know, all of these different touch points with those divine breadcrumbs, they do play a, a pivotal role in getting you to that next level. So you said something when we were chatting a little bit off air, um, we were talking about the authentic self and how that's just how your writing is, wherever it is, whether it's in, in a blog, whether it's in an article that you've, you've uh, been in or what, or you've written or your books, but doing that can feel not just powerful, but for the first time, or even the first few times that could be scary to someone, especially it's one thing to write it authentically to yourself, like in a journal. It's another thing to write something and then it's published for public consumption in some way. Could you talk a little bit about how you were courageous to come through that and to decide these are things I wanna share and I'm okay with getting, letting my voice be heard, whatever that is. Yes, I think that, you know, I personally have connected with people through their writing and their messages and videos I've seen. And, you know, everyone has something to say. If you're a writer, all you need to do is write. And you're, there you go, you're a writer, right? That, I like to say that all the time to people to encourage them. Um, if, you, if you keep writing, eventually, eventually your writing will be seen and you're, you're tenacious about getting it out there. But in terms of just being courageous to share your authentic self, that can be a process for some people. And it definitely was for me. You know, I've decided to lay it all out there. I've discussed really hard topics. Uh, my children's grief, uh, losing their parents. And I've also discussed divorce and a lot of things that are really hard. Parenting woes, you know, putting it out there. But I find my best writing is authentic writing. You know, I'm not sugarcoating. That's not what I do. I really tell it like it is. Um, that's my distinct style and I'm sticking to it. Uh, and I had to develop a really thick skin when I was on air to, to even, even though I wasn't writing in the first person at, during that time, you know, someone could write in and say, you know what, you look better in green. You shouldn't be wearing purple. You know, so you have to develop a thick skin in order to do that. So I think the foundation of being in journalism, being a reporter and, you know, going through those stages has left me to this point where I put it out there and I do what I do because people respond to my writing. I can't tell you I, how much it means to receive an email to get photos like this whole week, I've been flooded with images from people um, posting images of their children reading my new book, Good Night Star, whoever you are, on social media. And this, this is why I do what I do, that I've connected with all of these people by being true and raising awareness about issues that have impacted my life. And other writers can do that too. I love that. And to your point, when you see someone has read your book, or when you see a picture of a child holding your book, there is just something absolutely magical about that, because it really feels like, I know I made a connection, even if it's just with that one person in that one moment, I have made a connection. And there is just, it's just an amazing and awesome feeling to have had knowing that you had that ripple effect. It's a ripple effect because now you don't know where that book can go. Someone, they might say you have to, to someone else, you have to read this book or they might reread it again and get something else out of it that they didn't get the first time. And then it carries forward in other ways. So I, I love that you got those, that feedback and those pictures. 
that, you know, publishing, as you know, being a writer and, and publishing books is not for the faint of heart. It's a long process. It will test every nerve you have at times, but it is the most rewarding thing when you see your book or, you know, your work in the hands of someone. And I also blog, you know, I blog for multiple um, websites, whether it be HuffPost or The Mighty or Scary Mommy. So it could also be a blog post that goes viral and people are commenting and they really understand your viewpoint and it resonates with them. Those, those uh, responses are literally everything and they keep me going. So let's talk something here about basically a form of target audience because the books you've published are children's books. And so the, the reader or the client, if you will, is the child, but the customer is the parent, but yet the parent is also a potential customer or a a reader on the blog side. So how do you blend those different audiences and those different messages together, but so that it's cohesive and that it, it really feels good to the respective audiences that you're working with? Yes. So I write for both adults and children, and it definitely is challenging because (laughs) my viewpoint is is different for each, you know, each genre there. Um, I can be, you know, witty, sarcastic, forthcoming, um, really transparent in writing for adults and how I feel. And then for children, it's, it's similar. I mean, I have a, a, a similar viewpoint in terms of being transparent um, and bringing up issues that I think need to be highlighted but they are distinctly different. And honestly, I didn't see myself as a children's book writer 15 years ago. You know, it was something that, you know, my beloved mom um, died of ovarian cancer in 2013. And I was her primary caregiver for many years. During that process, um, you know, we were the type of people and I still am, I try to find humor in everything that I do. And I remember distinct, distinctly, you know, her being hooked up to an IV and all day infusions. And we just would have a great time and we would really share stories and memories and hopes for the future. And one pivotal moment she shared with me, I did not have a clue at that time, but she always dreamed of writing a children's book. So after she died, I was on an absolute mission that I had to write a children's book. I would not rest until I fulfilled her dream. And it took me five years to do it because I had already established an audience for adults. um, And I was transitioning to a genre I had no footing in at all. Um, But I was inspired by my mom and also my son who asked me serendipitously one day, mom, what was it like when I lived in your belly? I thought, what a great idea for a book. So, you know. I love that question too, like. "Hmm." What was it like? I'm like, well, let me tell you, buddy. But (laughs) no, so, so the book, the book, When You Lived in My Belly was born out of love, you know, from two people who know what my heart sounds like from the inside, my mom and my son. And, you know, it, it brought it all full circle and it did a lot better than I anticipated. Uh, and I have a lot more, you know, writing in me. Um, the second book, Good Night Star, Whoever You Are, was inspired by uh, my two children. I have one bonus uh, daughter who's now 25. Uh, she lost her mom when she was four years old. Oh. So I, I entered her life when she was eight Um, And I've raised her since then. And then I have, as we discussed, a biological son um, and their dad died uh, in 2018. Hmm. And they both shared this viewpoint that was just incredible to me. I remember my daughter years ago, she would, especially during long car rides, she would see a star in the sky and feel like it was following her and say, that's just my mom checking up on me and reminding me she loves me. And it always stuck with me, like tore at every heartstring I have. And I had it in my bank, you know, my memory bank forever. And unbelievably, more than a decade later, my son, we were driving home from the beach, 
He said, mom, it looks like a star is following me. Maybe it's dad. And then he expanded his viewpoint and said, maybe it's Grammy Mimi, who is my mom, or my cat, Orangina the cat. But I couldn't believe that both children at different times in their lives, you know, saw the same star. They wanted to self-soothe. They wanted to make that connection. They wanted to see that and believe that it was their parent looking out for them. And I figured I needed to write this book for other children who need to see the star as well. I love that. I absolutely, absolutely love that because I would wager too that yes, it helps children, but I think that that probably would help a lot of adults too, because a true, a really, really, really good children's book connects with the adult too. It's not just to a child. And I love that you have done that. I, I, I thought your books, your book was absolutely charming. I thought it was so sweet. And it was one of those that when I read it, I was like, I, I get that. I get that feeling because I too could relate to that, that feeling of, I think that that's happening. The, the star, I've named this star. So I know that that's my grandmother, or I know that that's this person. And I, so I love that you did that. Thank you. Yeah. Some of my early reviews of the book were so poignant and heartfelt. One of them, I recall from a reader's favorite, you know, a reviewer said, this inspired a conversation with my daughter that I wouldn't have had otherwise because about her grandmother, you know, and so that's exactly as I've told you before, these are the reasons why I write. I absolutely feed off of the energy of my readers and to hear this kind of feedback from you too. I, I do believe what you said, it resonates with adult adults as well. Um, it's, it's everything to me. So thank you. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, what I love is that when you take something and you've, you've poured so much love into your piece and, and but that love can be felt. You can really feel when love has been poured into any kind of piece, even if it's not a children's book, but you can still feel that. And when it is poured into a children's book, there's just something a little bit more magical about that because, you know, you've, you've basically created a very safe space for the parent or for the adult the, or the older reader in this case, and then the younger reader to have a conversation just like you, like you were told, but they can have that conversation or that little one can process something and then come back later and say, Hey, you know, can, can we read this again? Or I have a question about what I, what we read and you've created a safe space because it was created out of love. And I, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I agree with that. And I poured my heart and soul into this book. Um, you know, it was so it was imperative to me to get it right, you know, especially with children's books. There's such a, I think there's like a lot of um, misunderstanding surrounding children's books and that, oh, you know, it's like 36 pages, no big deal. You can just write one in your spare time. And <laughs> it, it's just not that way because you have so little amount of words to get your messaging across. Every single word has to be lovingly handpicked, at least in my world, mm -hmm. and reviewed multiple times to make it in the book. It's it's really difficult. The, the shorter the manuscript, oftentimes, the harder it is to get your messaging across. When you can just wax philosophical indefinitely, <laughs> it's fine. I mean, I can write, you know, pretty easily that way. But keeping it short, concise, to the point, powerful, uh, you have to select your language really carefully. Absolutely. I am so glad you said that because you're right. There is a misconception that, well, it's just easy. It's like, mm, no, actually. It's, <laughs> not, it's really not easy. But I do think you have to have the heart for it. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I think it, I think it becomes a bit easier for those who do have the heart to write for a, write a children's book. And even they might not realize they do until they start writing or the idea hits them and then it starts to come through. So I have a question for you. How did you decide on the illustrations? How did you, uh, you know, cause every children's book can have its own flair, its own feeling. 
a Seuss book doesn't look the same as Madeline, but they're still children's books and they still have a feel to them. So how did you come about with the illustrations that support your story? So my best friend since kindergarten is my illustrator for both of my titles. I love yeah. that. <laughs> we bonded in kindergarten. We both have the same first and middle names, Jody Lynn and Jody Lynn, spelled differently. Love it. But we bonded during that time. And she has been a constant presence and um, support for my almost my entire life for more than 43 years at this point. So uh, when I was talking about doing my first children's book in honor of my mother, it just was not something that I could put out to the universe and hope that the illustrations would come back the way I wanted them to come back. Yeah. I, I, it just meant so much to me that I asked her because she's an incredibly talented artist and she comes from a, a long line of incredibly talented artists if she would do it. And her and her mom, Karen King, uh, illustrated my first children's book and they did it you know, flawlessly. Their style is so unique in this age of digital um, illustration. You know, Goodnight Star, whoever you are, is actually hand-painted collage. And if you flip through the pages, some of it almost like looks like it's going to come out at you. It's mm -hmm. so vivid mm -hmm. and detailed and different in this age. And I really did not want digital illustrations for my titles uh, because I think, you know, and I'm not saying anything bad about people who prefer it. And there's incredibly talented people who do that as well. But for my style and Again, these were inspired by real stories in my life, real people behind them. Um, for me, I wanted to have a hand in the illustrations. I wanted to kind of be able to see them throughout the process and weigh in and that my weigh in was welcome as well. So I wanted to work with, with Jody, and I'm, it's just the most beautiful, inspiring work that she has delivered with this title. I love it. I think that is awesome. And you're right that when you have found the right style and the right artist to work with, it really does become, it feels so good because you know that your words will just be amplified by such gorgeous illustrations to accompany it. And it will make it so much more enticing, more like involved for the reader so that that young one who's reading is, is can feels all of the feels. It's not just the words that they start to feel. They feel the picture and they feel the, the, what the combination of them can do. So when you have the right person, I mm -hmm. think that that's powerful. And if you don't have the right person, it, then ask for samples. If you're not sure if that's the right person, then don't be afraid to say, can I see a sample of your work so that you can make that decision? I, I love that you were confident with what you wanted to do like that. It's, it's vital. It's a vital part of the process, especially when you're talking about a picture book. Mm -hmm. A yes. lot of times, a lot of times you were going to connect with your readers first go round. It could be the illustrations that captivate their attention and get them to want to hear the, the book read again and again and again. And your messaging, you know, has a better chance of kind of permeating their brains when both of them are working together like a symphony. So, I mean, I also just have, I have tremendous respect for Jody as a person and we, because we know each other so well, we are able to have open dialogue through the process. And I, that is just invaluable. You know, where I really, I will defer to her, obviously, because this is what she does, but she really listens and she does a great job of incorporating some things um, that I wanted. Like, for instance, I really wanted the star in this book to have a personality. So yeah. I did. Yeah. Because like almost like interacting with the child mm -hmm. and making it more whimsical and she you know, acquiesced to that. And the result is this beautiful book. Well, the star was another character and, the, mm -hmm. and this character needed to be just as multi-dimensional, have life to it, to it just as much as the child. So I, I love that you did that. I think that that's awesome. Yeah. And I'm glad that 
that Jody was able to capture the beauty and the and the, the vividness, the life of the star. I think that that's important. I love that. I yeah. I love that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So I would love for you to share how people can connect with you because this has just been such an awesome conversation and I I love what you're sharing. I love what you're about. And I think that there's so much goodness that people will get if they will come and read your work either as an adult or for their young child. So yes. where can people connect with you and where can they find your book? Where can they find your, your other works to read if they're looking for adult stuff? <laughs> yes. So you can find me on jodymeltzer.com, J-O-D-I-M-E-L-T-Z-E-R.com. You can also find my work on a bunch of websites, you know, the HuffPost and the Mighty Scary Mommy, um, multiple websites if you just Google my name. And books, of course, are sold online anywhere. Uh, it could be Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Target, Walmart, um, Books a Million. It's, they're everywhere, both of my titles, Good Night Star, Whoever You Are, and When You Live to My Belly. I love those titles so, so much. And I Thank love you. that you found a passion that reaches both adults and children and that children benefit from you being willing to share your authentic self and helping them to move through some stuff that might be a little scary at times or something that's hard to process. So the only you. way I know, yeah, it's the only way I know. That's how I operate in life. You just have to put your authentic self out there and be confident in who you are and take that first step. Oh, awesome, Jody. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me.